Welcome everybody to another session of Perspective Not Predictions, where we hope to give you some practical tips and advice on how to navigate and behave during these volatile markets. Today's focus is going to be on controlling what we can. There's a great Venn diagram that uh, financial writer Carl Richards put together, and it is two intersecting circles that number one circle has things that really matter, and number two, things that we can control. And he labels that intersecting part things that you should focus on. So today we're going to jump right in and focus on the things that you should be focusing on, not all the other noise that's out there. So let's jump right in. Number one is your savings and spending rate. This is uh, your income is your single largest wealth building tool. Experts say 10 to 15% is a good rule of thumb. In practice, we see those that are saving a whole lot more than that, sometimes 20 or 30% are accumulating and put themselves on a great path to be able to have some reserves for investments in emergency fund. Now, if you're retired and uh, not saving, you wanna look at your spend rate. So how much are you spending in relation uh, to your overall you know, expected return. So a good thing to look at is your distribution rate. Are you taking three, four or 5%? And how does that compare with your long-term expected investment return? There should be some margin in there. This gets us into number three, our investment mix. Your investments matter. This doesn't mean that you're gonna overhaul or make a major change. Maybe the change is uh, nothing and you reviewed it and it's proper. So where do we start? Let's look at the short term. Do you have a three to six month emergency fund? Have you accounted for what you know you're gonna spend in the next 12 to 18 months? That should be in a liquid reserve that's easily accessible and should have a lot of peace of mind with that. Now let's go on the other end of this spectrum uh, for the money that you know you're not gonna to touch for 10 years or more, maybe 20 or 30 years. And that's whether you're still accumulating or in retirement, there is a bucket of money that you don't plan to touch for 10 or more years. That's probably in your more aggressive stock investments that are trying to get a good return over inflation over the long term. And we should care less what those do in any quarter or year. We bought those for the reasons that we wanted to get a good return over time and we were comfortable with the short term fluctuations. So let's just reaffirm that that's why we bought them, make sure they're the right mix and make peace that's, that's why we own them. Now, the tough part can be in the middle, the two to 10 years, that's very personal, something that we help clients talk through all the time. That's gonna be money that you're not sure how you're gonna use, and it's a lot of factors that go into it to make good decisions around your savings ha habits, your tolerance for risk, um, your flexibility of how you might access that capital. Um, that's something that's very personal, and you wanna make, make sure you have a good plan on. Uh, so once we have a good uh, grasp of cash flow and our assets, now let's change gears a little bit and look at our estate and insurance. This is going to be, uh, you know, looking at your existing wills or trusts or insurance policies that you have in place, your titling of your accounts. Here's a couple of areas that you want to look at when you do uh, an insurance and estate review. Look at any new accounts that you opened recently. Are they properly titled joint accounts or trusts or beneficiaries? Do a beneficiary review. Uh, has anything changed on that front on your IRAs? Uh, are they updated on your life insurance policies, on your tie, uh, properties that you own? Make sure those go to the people that you want them to and there's no mistakes there. You'd be surprised how often we uncover either missing beneficiaries or ones that aren't correct. Uh, finally, you wanna update uh, any acknowledgements on your power of attorney or patient advocate forms. Those forms are not gonna be valid if there's not a more recent acknowledgement and signature. Uh, so take a look at those. Experts recommend every couple of years, if not annually, just take a fresh look at your estate and insurance documents. So there it is. There's four practical things that you can do that are in your control, that matter, that don't get caught up in the day-to-day -day craziness and noise of go everything going on in these uncertain times. Um, hopefully this was helpful and you have some concrete things that you can start to work on and put into place. If you need any help reviewing any of those items or have questions around them, certainly reach out to the team at KFG. We're always happy to help. In the meantime, again, I hope this was helpful uh, as a starting point for some areas that you can focus on. And thanks for listening. Have a great day.